Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I am your host and today we are going to be discussing a hypertonic pelvic floor. Uh, What that is, it is a pelvic floor that is too tight. Now I've mentioned in the past, I've mentioned about causes of pelvic floor dysfunction and what pelvic floor dysfunction is. Today, I want to delve specifically into what it means to have a pelvic floor that's too tight. Now, the reason why I want to discuss this pretty early on is because a lot of people think about doing the pelvic floor exercises as just squeeze and lift, squeeze and lift, squeeze and lift. And for those of you who can see me on the video, imagine it's like, a bicep curl and all you're doing is squeeze, 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 squeeze and you're never actually straightening out your arm again, you're never doing any stretches and you end up with a very sore bicep that's maybe a bit crampy, maybe doesn't want to do much because it just is a bit sore and dead. So I'm going to cover four basic things. So I'm going to cover toileting, I'm going to cover pain, I'm going to also cover what can cause hypertonicity and what can be done to help. So after telling you all about the different things that can cause it, I, I will give you some solutions so you don't have to you don't have to worry or wait for two weeks like last time. It is just all here today. So first things first, and the main thing that I think having a hypertonic or too tight pelvic floor is, is how it affects our toileting habits. And it can affect incontinence. It can cause incontinence. And which is why I wanted to bring this up so early because people think, oh, I'm incontinent, I wet my pants. I need to do strengthening exercise, I need to tighten everything. And a hypertonic pelvic floor is a pelvic floor that's too tight already. And it could be also linked to it being overactive. And if it's too tight, no amount of tightening or strengthening exercises are going to make an improvement because you can't tighten something that's already tight. Okay, it's like winding a clock. If anyone's ever wound a clock, I had this conversation with my mum the other day, winding a clock too much and or screwing in a screw and you've gone too far and it's gone, it's threaded or it's gone bang if you're winding a clock and it's just useless. You can't do anything with it. So it's, it's like that. If the clock's not going and you're tightening it, it's something else that's the issue. Um... So yeah, constipation, uh, incontinence could be a sign of that. And I want to just go over some other things as well, which you might think, oh, okay, maybe this is leading me towards thinking I've got a tight pelvic floor rather than a loose, weak one that needs tightening. So constipation is a main one because if you can't relax, then you're not really going to be able to poop. And this goes hand in hand with having difficulty starting. So you might feel like you need to go for a poo, but once you get to the toilet, it's kind of gone because you've, you're tensed, you've sucked it back up or whatever. And you're having difficulty going. It's um, also, you could, when you go for a poo, it could be quite thin because the pelvic floor isn't opening, it's not relaxing to let it out. So you feel like you're um, pooping shoestrings rather than snakes. It could be that things are a bit tight and it's like putting on a different slot in the Play-Doh factory and it's coming out a bit like a shoestring. 
difficulty starting now this isn't just going for a poo but also going for a wee if you sit on the toilet and you go to go and it's it's just kind of takes a little bit of jigging about or mm, or pushing around or massaging your tummy or anything like that to get things going or bearing down then it could be that things are a bit tight because it's not able to relax and even once you've got going you could have incomplete emptying so you could kind of go for a little bit and then stop and then go again and then stop and go again and then stop or you feel like you're just not it's not coming out it's not all coming out now these could be linked to something else but a hypotonic pelvic floor can be a cause and i mentioned before having little slithery shoestrings if you find that when you're weeing that it's more of a trickle than a flow that could be also an issue and with all these you can get pain I know I tend to veer along the side of a too tight pelvic floor than a weak pelvic floor and I know at certain times when I get a tight pelvic floor and I notice it most is when I need to go to the toilet and I relax and it's a bit crampy it's a bit painful and I'm having to kind of psych myself up and just relax and get in the zone to let go to wee so pain pain is a major thing to be aware of and i want to go through now a few different areas where you might feel pain so i mentioned before you've got constipation and incomplete emptying and all of those so if you have any pain with toileting it could be a sign that things are a bit too tight and they're not able to relax do you get pain in your hips and i don't just mean within the pelvis which if you do have pain within the pelvis, that could be a sign that things are a bit tight. But if you get pain in your hip, in your hip joint, in and around your groin or over your hip bones where your legs join onto your torso, if you get a bit tight around there, it could be related. Now the pelvic floor doesn't just work in isolation. It's the sling at the bottom but it talks to the muscles around it to make everything flow and work well together. So if that's a bit tight, it could start pulling on a different area, which is why I mentioned you could feel pain in your abdomen, in your hips, anywhere in your pelvis, in your glutes even, or in um, your back. A lot of people tend to get lower back pain and it could be that it's just being tugged by a pelvic floor that's too tight. So if you do go to see anybody for a back issue, make sure you go and see somebody who has more global thinking because if they're just treating the back and that's not the cause, that's a symptom, then you'll be going back and forth and just wasting your money. Um, also, pain with sexual activity or pain with inserting, say, tampons or menstrual cups, things like that. If you're finding that you're clamping or it just hurts to put things in, things don't fit right, things don't sit right, that could be a sign that the pelvic floor is too tight. And you might be listening to these and going, okay, yeah, yeah, I've got all of these, but how how do i avoid this how do i get over it how do i like what even caused it what even caused it amy so that brings me on to step three or well, point three there are a few things and this isn't a huge list and if i've missed anything please let me know but the main things that i wrote down were and this is one that i am particularly guilty of um one thing could be holding yourself stiff now i am a slim person i'm a slender person and i'm also a wonky person i've got terrible posture well it's a lot better now but i used to have really really bad posture and 
I am acutely aware of how I stand and how I hold myself. So I notice that I am butt gripping, I'm tucking my hips under, I'm sucking in my lower abs to try and keep my hips under, I've got my head up, my shoulders back, and I'm trying to hold myself upright so I don't get judged and don't get looked at weird. And yeah, it's all childhood traumas, yeah, of being bullied. But I hold myself quite tightly and quite stiff and quite upright to try and stay upright and be proper and be the upstanding personal trainer that I am that looks the part and if I do that for too long if I don't give myself permission to relax I get pain I get pain in my back I get pain in my stomach I get pain in my hips I just get pain everywhere and I notice now since becoming a women's health coach and a holistic chorus store coach, that when I am holding myself, even my pelvic floor muscles are zipped up to help me stay stable. You could also notice this if, um, if you go to the gym a lot and you're bracing yourself to do lots of heavy lifting, that could be you're over bracing and everything's just getting a bit overactive and you're not giving it time to relax and if if you are like me and you're a skinny person you think oh i've i'm just got to be seen as a skinny person even if it's not um conscious you might be stuffing your tummy in and bracing your abs a lot more than somebody else who doesn't really care um yeah so that's that and that kind of goes alongside overtraining. So I said before, if you if you feel like you need to do your pelvic floor exercise, you need to be, you do your kegels, and it's always squeeze, 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 lift, lift, lift. When you're walking, when you're out, when you whenever you're moving, you're not giving it chance to relax and do the other things so rather than just clenching a fist all day are you able to relax your hand it's that kind of thing and actually try it with me so imagine you're walking around all day trying to support your pelvic floor going oh i need well i need to strengthen my hand i've got weak grip strength how about this i've got weak grip so i'm going to tense my hand and grip as hard as I can to see how hard I can do it and then I'll relax and then I'll do it again and I'll hold it all the time all the time all day while I'm doing everything and then by the end of the day my hand is gonna hurt do you think your hand would hurt my hand's starting to hurt just doing this and if you can see I'm white knuckling it here and oh, just just that minute of holding my fist Opening everything up was like, ah, ooh, a bit of a, a bit of an issue, a bit tight, a bit painful. And I can give my hand a rub, but you can't really do that to your pelvic floor. So let yourself relax. You don't have to train all the time. I mean, making sure you've got a strong grip by holding your hands tight all day and then being expected to open a jar of pickles. I don't know if my hand would want to be able to do it. It's like, no, I'm over it. I'm over it. Don't, don't make me do any more work, please. I'll just give me a rest. So yeah, I hope that analogy works. I like that one. We'll use that again. Um, so the next thing that could cause it um, is um, <clears throat> surgery. So these are kind of trauma to the area. And so that's surgery, injury, um, abuse, um, yeah, general trauma. If you've fallen on your tailbone, if you've had um, some kind of surgery, you've had an episiotomy or you've torn during childbirth, all of these things, or even a C-section or surgery that's related to a muscle around it the pelvic floor muscles or any muscles if you've injured yourself the muscles around it kind of go oh ow and they tense up to protect themselves and along the same vein as uh, mental stress and mental trauma 
back when we were animals, or if you ever if you've ever told off a dog, you've seen a guilty dog, his tail's between his legs and he's running away or he's sneaking away because he's stressed, he's guilty, he's upset. That's our body does the same thing. So remember, we have a tailbone. And if we're stressed, kind of goes along the lines of butt gripping, but our tailbone will tuck under, we'll tuck our tail between our legs. And if we're in a constant stressed mode, which could be purely mental, it could be linked to physical stress and trauma as well, but any kind of stress that we're under constantly, our tail's gonna go between our legs. And that shortens things. It means things can't work as well as they want to. And kind of along the same vein is chronic things like inflammation. So if you um, have, say, endometriosis, and you've got a lot of inflammation around the pelvic region, that is that's also related to pain then and the muscles and you want to uh, from experience from my own experience you you hold yourself tight you hold yourself in a protective position and again you're stressed because you're in pain and you don't like it and nothing's feeling nice and so you hold yourself funny you might be a bit stiff because you're holding yourself funny but you're in pain because it's crampy and everything just gets a bit ouchy, a bit ooh, and a bit tight. Like those descriptive words, I have a big vocabulary. Um, and then things like infections. If you get UTIs, like if you have pain on urination and it's, it's sudden, like all of a sudden you're noticing that you're having pain, go to the doctor, go get it assessed because it could be that you've got an infection never feel any shame about going to the doctor for anything downstairs related related to your bladder your bowel your vagina anything because they're there to help and if they don't listen go to a different doctor okay which leads me on to what we can do about it there are ways the first one that i always like people to do is go and see a women's health physiotherapist now, I was talking with a client this morning and there isn't one near her. It's like a couple of hours away. And since COVID, there are a lot more physios who are able to do telehealth appointments. And I'm sure there would be physiotherapists who would do that over the phone, even when we're not in lockdown. So you can always have a look and I have a link on my website, which I will post in the show notes. So if you do want to go and find a physio, then please have a look at that link and book yourself in. What they can do is they can assess and most of the people on my list do do internal checkups, which are digital finger checks and they assess things and like a normal physio they can release around and just get you get you functioning again um they they can diagnose and they can refer on as well which is not something that i can do i can refer you to a physio and then they will refer you on but i think a physio is a good good start because as i said they can assess they may, so depending on what they find, they may be able to prescribe or give you a kind of dilator. If you're extra clamping when you have um, sex or you're having trouble inserting anything, they might try vaginal dilators. Um, they will probably give you relaxing exercises and down training exercises. And this is where I um, am similar to them. I will, so in my holistic core restore coaching, I coach women through how to connect to the pelvic floor and how to listen to the body to feel it relax. And we can do this together. So if you just take a big deep breath for me, and when I say big deep breath, I want you to fill your chest 
feel your diaphragm to your belly as well and see if you can feel anything else stretch either down your pelvic floor or in your back. So just take a big deep breath. And then when you breathe out, I want you to just relax and let everything go. Let the belly go. You have permission. Let the pelvic floor go. Let your face go as well. When I mentioned stress before, if we clamp our jaws, we that is connected all the way down to our pelvic floor, all the way down to our toes. And the message gets transferred that we're stressed. So it gets the message to the pelvic floor and that goes eat as well. You can do stretches. My favorite ever stretch, I've got a couple, but I love doing the child's pose because you get to just let everything hang. And cat cow, which is a nice mobility one for the hips. And just getting into the flow. I like to kind of cat cow and then tail swish. That's quite a nice one. If you're watching on video, I'm dancing. Um, next is um, hip stretches. I love hip stretches. If you're sitting down a lot and you get tight hips, stretch them out. Have one leg back, one leg forward. Tuck your hips under and then lean forward so that back leg you're getting a good stretch right in the hip and then do the same on the other side so all of these stretches and more i have a whole bank of stretches that i give to different people depending on what they need they just help to limber everything up help to relax and it's just it's just a nice feel good way to finish a session um and also finding ways to de-stress we can't control everything. It's all about controlling the controllables. And even if it's for five minutes a day or one minute, just focusing on breathing in and out through the nose, relaxing the jaw again so you don't get that clampy, unstressed action. But keep your lips together so you're not breathing through your mouth. And you're just going to breathe in and out and relax even for one minute it will truly help just to calm the nervous system and it helps the body to reassess what is needed so let's do that together as well i will talk you through it but what i want you to do so while i'll just teach you how breathing through the nose only close the mouth keep the teeth apart and either sit or lie or you can do this while driving just keep your eyes open okay so all you're going to do is breathe in two three four and hold for two and then out two three four and again in two three four hold two out two three four breathing in two three four and hold two out two three four breathing in two three four hold two out two three four breathing in two three four and hold two out two three four breathing in last one two three four hold two and out two three four and that is all you need to do just to help you relax calm the mind and you can do that six breaths in and out with that rhythm or whatever rhythm works for you if you want to make it a little bit longer but six breaths is four seconds in four out two seconds in between is 10 seconds so that's one minute if that helps 
great. And you can add that to your stretches. When you breathe in, imagine you're sending the breath to whatever feels tight, even if the breath doesn't go there. If you're stretching the front of your thigh, breath doesn't go there, but imagine that the muscles are stretching when you breathe in. When you breathe out, imagine that they're softening and relaxing. It's a great tool to just help get into the body and learn how to relax that pelvic floor. So as I said again, I will share a link to go and visit a pelvic floor physiotherapist. They will be able to see if you are too tight or too weak or if your Goldilocks been just right in the middle. And then they can refer you back to me or they will build up a program or refer you on to somebody else for further investigation. If you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. So please send me an email. It's info at connecthealth.fitness or you can book an appointment. It's a free 30 minute appointment and we go through what is bespoke for you. We just figure out where you are, what you need and see if I can help you or if you do need a referral to a physio. That is it for today. Thank you for joining me. And I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode. And please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.